So you accidentally burned yourself on a curling iron or a hot pan or hot water. Now what should you do? Today, we're going to talk about how to take care of minor burns at home. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified dermatologist, and I'm here to help you understand your skin and hair and nails. If that sounds good to you, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before we delve too deep into the treatment of burns, I want to make this explicitly clear that this is not personal medical advice. I'm talking about minor burns at home and how I would counsel a friend or a family member who is dealing with one of these. It's always really important that you talk to your doctor or medical care team to ensure that you're getting personalized care for you. In this video, I really wanted to go over the treatment of minor burns because I cannot tell you how many text messages I receive, gosh, every couple of weeks, like, hey, friend, I, my son burned himself on this hot water or I hit my wrist with my curling iron and what should I do? How should I treat it? And although I think always, as I said, you should talk to your personal doctor, I feel like there are burns that can be treated at home and can be done so safely. And so I kind of wanted to guide you through that. I also wanna teach you how to minimize scarring with your burns. And so we'll go over that today too. Two of the main hospitals that I did my medical training at, the University of Michigan, as well as UC Davis, have huge burn centers. So I have a lot of experience in treating intense burns that would land you in the hospital and also knowing what needs hospital care or a doctor's visit and what can be dealt with in a more conservative manner. I also wanna be clear that this video is about thermal burns. So things that happen from hot water, hot oil, curling iron, hot pan, not electrical burns or chemical burns. In medicine, we categorize burns as first, second, or third degree burns. First degree burns are the most superficial. They only involve the epidermis or the very outer layer of your skin. First degree burns tend to be red, painful, dry, and do not involve any blisters or breaks in the skin. Second degree burns we refer to as partial thickness burns. So these go past the epidermis and into the dermis, that second layer of the skin. These are typically very painful, have redness, swelling, and blistering associated with them. And third degree burns, which are the most serious, are referred to as full thickness burns. These go through the epidermis, the dermis, and into deeper structures like fat, muscle, and even bone. These these actually tend to not be painful because they go so deep that they damage the nerves. These tend to appear whitish or even charred and the skin can slough immediately off. So first and foremost, let's talk about when to seek medical attention for your burn. Absolutely number one, if you have concerns that you have a third degree burned, you need to go to the hospital. If the pain from your burn is not controllable with the steps that I recommend, you also need to seek medical attention. If you have a burn larger than the size of your palm, it's important to get medical care. There are also certain body locations where if you were to have a second degree burn and particularly a large second degree burn, it would be really important to get medical care. So that includes the hands and the feet, as well as the genitals and the face particularly the eyes or the ears. Also, if you have a burn that wraps all the way around a limb, which we call a circumferential burn, it's very important to get medical care. And then lastly, if your burn is not showing signs of getting better or improving over the course of a few days, it starts to smell bad, have a new type of discharge, become more swollen or painful, you need medical attention. So the minor thermal burns that I'm talking about in this video that you would typically be safe treating at home are things that are smaller than the size of your hand, are not involving important structures like your eyes, your face, your hands, or your feet, and you feel like you can get the pain under control relatively quickly. And even if you're not meeting any of the criteria I just talked about, if you have any doubt or question and you feel like you want to be in touch with a medical professional after a burn, just do it. So let's say you're curling your hair and you turn your head and you happen to tap your curling iron to your forehead and it gets really painful. Or you're removing something from the oven and your forearm hits the grate of the oven, or you're stirring something from a pot and a little bit of that hot oil splashes out at you. What should you do next? The very first step is to stop the burning process. So of course, if any Anything on you is on fire, you need to remove that. And then the very next step is to run that area under cool, but not icy water. And you definitely don't wanna put ice on it either. The reason you want to apply cool water is that's going to take heat away from that area. You want to shut down that burning or inflammatory process. The problem with ice is that it's so cold, it can actually start to damage the surrounding skin. And once you've had ice on for a while, you actually lose some sensation in the area and you can't tell if you're over applying it. So you really wanna stick with cool or cold water. If it's it's in an area that's easy for you to run under cool water. That's what I typically recommend doing. And you actually wanna run it under cold water for quite some time, typically until that burning sensation really goes down. So that could be as little as five minutes, but it could be upwards of half an hour. Also, if it's an area on your hand or your foot or your lower leg where it's easy for you to soak it, it's also okay to just soak in cool water. One question that sometimes comes up is like, can I use sink water? Does it have to be sterile water? As long as it's drinkable tap water, that is perfectly safe and acceptable. In addition to soaking
being the burned area, you also want to remove any jewelry from that area, whether that's rings, bracelets, watches, etc. The reason for that is say you have a burn on your hand. If you leave your ring on, you inevitably after that trauma of the burn are going to start to swell. And if you're starting to swell, that's going to reduce blood supply to the rest of your finger. So while you are not swollen, before you swell, you need to remove all your jewelry. Once your jewelry is off, you're cooling the area and that process has started. You want to think about other types of pain control because oftentimes water isn't enough. We always recommend an over-the-counter pain reliever like ibuprofen or acetaminophen. Ibuprofen is Advil, acetaminophen is Tylenol. I personally prefer ibuprofen because it has a better anti-inflammatory capacity, but if for some reason you can't take Advil, for example, you have a history of gastritis or stomach ulcers, Tylenol is also acceptable. One thing that's really important to note is that in the immediate aftermath of your burn, you should not be applying any type of ointment or salve. Do not apply butter. You do not want to be applying anything occlusive that could trap heat in the skin. This can make the burn worse, which is pretty much the opposite of what you're trying to do. In the immediate aftermath, if you feel like you need to wrap the burn up, you just want to use soft gauze or a gentle wrap. You don't want to be putting any pressure or sticky bandage around the burn. If you get any blisters, you want to leave them intact, meaning do not pop them. They will generally rupture on their own over time. Once they do rupture, then we do something called debridement where we gently cut off all that dead skin. So you should not be cutting off anything that's painful, just dead skin. And the whole reason for removing that dead skin is so that it doesn't serve as a nidus for infection. So initial protocol after a burn is get that jewelry off, get that burn under cool water, take your pain reliever and leave your blisters alone. And I should also say it's okay to change your mind about a burn, like think, okay, I've got this handled, I can do this at home. And then if it evolves beyond something you feel comfortable with, it's totally okay to seek medical attention later. Like do that, don't feel like you have to take it all in because burns can be really scary, they can make people anxious, they can be really uncomfortable. So if you need medical care, don't resist. In terms of caring for that burn site long-term, so let's say the pain is gone, it's the next day, you kind of gently wrapped it overnight. Let's talk about how we would wash this and bandage it and keep it clean and protected. With a burn wound, you wanna be gently washing it once a day. You can use antibacterial hand soap or you can use your gentle facial cleanser. After you wash the area, gently pat it dry with a clean cloth, and then we can go in and apply some type of ointment or salve. So you don't wanna apply the ointment right after the burn when there's still heat dissipating from the wound, but the next day you can start to take care of it that way. There's a few different things that you can apply to a burn wound. You can apply plain Vaseline or some type of protective ointment, whether that's Aquaphor or CeraVe healing ointment or even prequel skin utility ointment. But you can also apply things like Aven Secofit, so that can help it heal a little bit faster. And also Meta Honey, which you can usually find on Amazon, is also really great for burn wounds. If you happen to have access to a French pharmacy or can get access to Biafine cream, that can also really help with burns. After you've cleansed the wound and applied your salve of choice, the next step is going to be applying non-stick gauze. And the reason you wanna use non-stick gauze is because changing a burn dressing can be very, very uncomfortable. And so you want as little sticking to that wound as possible. After you've covered it with non-stick gauze, then you can gently wrap gauze around it or use paper tape to secure gauze around the edges to ensure that it stays fully covered. I tend to try to avoid like really sticky band-aids around the edges of burns. Oftentimes that skin is really tender and wants to kind of peel off. It might not be fully intact. And so if you can use like paper tape, which is a little bit softer, that's what I recommend. If you found that your gauze has stuck to your burn in any way and it's painful to remove it, you can gently run that area under warm water to help you remove the gauze. And then typically we're looking to change the bandage every single day. You wanna make sure that you are constantly cleansing that wound out because one thing that makes a burn worse and really a burn scar worse is if it gets infected. If you're finding that your bandage changes are too painful to do at home on your own, that's another reason to get medical care. I would say on average, first degree burns take about three to seven days to fully heal and second degree burns can take up to a few weeks. So you want to keep changing out that dressing until the skin has completely healed over. Once it's healed, and this is super important if you're trying to optimize your scar, you want to keep that protected from the sun. There are a couple different ways you can do that. You can keep it covered with clothing. You can buy silicone gel sheets and cut them to size and apply them over the burn if it's in a sun exposed area, or you can just apply sunscreen every single day to that burn. If you're noticing the burn site is starting to hyperpigment, you can also talk to your doctor about getting a prescription for topical hydroquinone. This helps inhibit pigment production and can make that fade a lot faster. How someone heals from a burn and how someone scars is often very genetically predetermined. I've had patients who've had horrible second degree burns who have almost no scarring, and I've had patients who've had permanent scarring from very small second degree burns. So the 
more you take care of it, make sure it doesn't get infected and protect it from the sun, the better chance you have of having an ideal scarring outcome. Oftentimes minor burns don't really need any in-office interventions to help improve them. They just will slowly get better on their own with good care. But for people who've had larger burns or more restrictive burns, there are in-office procedures like lasers to reduce that scarring, as well as to reduce the constriction of the tissue. So something unique about burn scars is the tissue tends to constrict and people can actually have movement impairment. So you can use lasers and other in-office technology to help people maintain their functional capabilities after a bad burn accident. So if you're watching this because you recently experienced experienced a minor burn. I really hope you found this helpful. Of course, if you have any questions, definitely put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.